Hello and welcome to Nathan's Garage. I'm Nathan Kershaw and this is not the mod. Bear with me. Don't panic, the mod's going to get finished. But for it to get finished and for me to not get frustrated and make mistakes, uh, I need a little break from it. Uh, I just need a little bit of variety. When I say a break, I mean like a couple days. So I have something very, very, very exciting for this car. What I considered to be truly groundbreaking. There may have been one other guy that did this in Poland about 10 years ago. Uh, I read about it on a forum called Driftworks that I used to be on all the time, a uh, UK forum. And it will completely transform the front end of this car. But anyway, before we get to it, thank you so much for taking a couple of minutes out of your day to follow on with the Nathan's Garage journey. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel, liking, subscribing, Patreons, PayPal, Pool, Tip Jar people, you are all awesome. Now let's get to this. You may be saying to yourself, what is this Ford Sierra Merc XR 40i front end based revolution that you're talking about? <sighs> Should have taken a deeper breath. This is the front cross member of a BMW E36. Geographically, very similar to the XR40i. These mounting points are very, very, very similar. These go into the chassis legs. Now, I want to do this without changing the car at all, so this cross member is going to get changed. Why would you do this, you silly, silly man, you may be asking yourself? Well, the reason is, I'll wait for the plane. The reason is, on the Sierra, the front arm is just this. There's none of that. That part is taken care of by a sway bar that runs behind, then angles and goes diagonally through this bar to locate it front to back. Now, cheap and probably good design for the amount of money it costs, but not as good a design as having a, an arm that is hard mounted in two places as opposed to just one. Because when you've got a sway bar going through it, the sway bar itself is moving and flexing, thus this arm is moving and flexing back and forth, changing caster and all sorts of tracking issues mid-corner. So what I plan on doing is doing all of this, creating mounts on the chassis rail for the rear mounts of the arms, doing coilovers on the front end, E36 coilovers on the front end, and modifying the top mount so they will fit straight into the stock Merker XR40i slash Ford Sierra, top mounts in the chassis. Steering will be taken care of by probably a Z3 rack, BMW Z3 rack, because it's a quicker radius. And we'll have E36 brakes on the front, we'll have E36 um, bolt pattern on the front for the wheels. I think it's gonna be awesome. And I plan on doing all of this with the engine still in the car. Yep. The engine's still in the car, I hear you say, yes, the engine's still in the car. I hear you say, how are you going to do it with the engine still in the car? I need to take another deep breath again. With this, this is Volvo Yoda's tool. It's a, an engine suspender, if you will. So that sits on the, in England, called the flitch panel or the inner wings. And we'll hook it to the engine, tighten it up, and then we can drop the cross member out and we have access to the underneath of the car. So to get underneath, we've got to get it up. Please forgive the sound because it's super hot. So wife tastics inside, AC is on, and it's also really windy. So these are Duralast axle stands, which hopefully won't kill me, but I'm as freaked out as everybody else. So a couple of wheels underneath the sill is good security or insurance. So let me show you the basic concept or lack thereof of the front end of this car. So, whereas the BMW's arm goes like that and then mounts itself to that point, 
and then the sway bar on the BMW comes from the front to this arm or the strut depending on whichever model it is Ford in their infinite wisdom thought we'll double up we'll make the sway bar do sway bar stuff and also locate the front arm front to back thus this is all situation I don't like and it's got a rear bar which is a pain in the ass every time you want to take the transmission out not that, that happens very often but if you want to do anything on the front end you've got to ratchet strap this bar together because it's all under tension not fun not fun and BMWs I'm sorry Ford guys but they do drive better now there is a company in England called uh, Burn Power and I think there's another one Rally Race or Rally something and they do a walk on what are called compression struts they do a bar that bolts there and goes to there and eliminates this sway bar. Now that's the issue, it eliminates the sway bar. So what they do is they sell a kit. I don't know if it's even sold anymore, but there was a kit and it basically mounts up here to the front chassis leg, comes down and then goes to, I think, that part of the front arm. And it's a blade type bar and I think they're like a thousand dollars. So, nope, because this whole BMW front end setup I have was $20 much more in my price range so let's get on and there we have Volvo Yoda tool in full working order so it's on the uh, as I say it's on this seam here that's that and it's on that one there pushed up against it tight I think yep and then there's a bolt there's a hole there as if Ford made it for this to happen through it so I did let's hope Let's also hope that the edge of the wings don't fold over either. Who knows? It is a journey. If this whole thing is a big old fail, I have Tim Spencer's Focus front brake kit in stock. So if this all fails and, uh, and, this, and the Mercury stuff goes back on, these lines are going to be braided anyway. And I do know I'm blessed with how lack of rusty all this stuff is. When I was in England, it was not like this. Thus, it didn't work on cars. I got some tears. <laughs> Mid job report, or what I assume is mid job, but I've never done it before, so I have no idea. Strut top mounts are off. Brake hoses cut. Uh, power steering hose, power steering uh, high pressure hose off. Steering shaft, which is up there undone sway bar undone engine mount nuts off i think it's pretty much dropping out now i can't think of anything else one thing that i never considered and i think the guy who did it in poland put a different engine in i think it was a front sump engine but the level of kick forward of this cross member to clear the sump 
considerably more than the level of that cake in any direction. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope this isn't a bust. I really hope this isn't a bust. Now, I'm not going to lie. It seems like we've got to the point of taking this cross member off really, really quickly, which is just, it's worrying to me. Because that means I've usually not done something. Huh. Now, at this point where the big disaster can happen, I'm hoping the car, well I'm hoping you can hear me for starters, I'm hoping the car has a has a soul and is like, I'll take care of you, when he goes on I'll take care of you, because he's really good. It moved. Bodywork doesn't look like it's collapsed. Yeah, it's way up for you. Where are you? Where's the Manchester spanner? Come on. I guess the uh, rag joint's going to get a forced upgrade.
Well, turn me under the wrong way. Oh, uh, this is still not playing. Jesus. Who'd have thought the rag joint would be the hardest one? Not me. I don't want to get underneath it because Turn. Okay, cars do return. Forgot about that. I only forgot about one thing. It's pretty spectacular for me. Yay! Oh my god. What a war. I knew it was going to be a war, but you know, it was. It was. It was. I knew it was, and it was. Okay, so let us recap and see if I can convince myself I've not just made a huge mistake. <laughs> okay, so you got front arm, solid mount. Front arm, elasticated mount. That's the issue. So the sway bar on the BMW comes from the front, like that. And on this one, around the back wall is one unit. No good. So we'll strip it all down and I'll lay them on top of each other and see how close they are.
helps if you have the gun the right way. You're not trying to tighten it. Locker. Now you see, this is all under tension with the with the front with the with the sway bar now. Huh, not as much as I thought actually. Huh. What? Huh. It always has been in the past, that's weird. That's weird. If this all works, basically got to figure out how to adapt these top mounts onto E36 struts to make them fit the XR bodywork. Stripped down and looking so close, they look like twins. Not really, not really. Well, you get the idea of where he came from, right? They're really close. Maybe all cars from cross members are close. But you know, width wise, they're really close. Uh, yeah, but. You can see them right here. That distance from there to there is more than there to there. I can modify that though. I can totally modify that. Chop into that. Not a problem. Not a problem. Another thing about the BMW cross member is it has these nubs which. I assume make it level in the BMW. I assume the BMW's chassis legs ramp up. And I'll be able to have a look under the mud. I told you she'd be helping. I'll be able to have a look under there to see if they do. And whether the XRs are completely like parallel because she doesn't have any nubs to change the angle of this compared to the chassis leg. So I'm gonna put them on the ground right now, so they're level. And then I'm gonna put a level on both of these tops and see where they come out at. I didn't know whether I was gonna have to shave those nubs off, but I mean, super rough, and I'm not gonna go off this for the final decision, but you've got, look at the bubble in the middle, a little bit of movement that brings it to level, and by eye, same thing, although this rocks. But anyway. Lift this up. Kind of a similar amount. Anyway, whatever. That didn't. That was a bit of a fail. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna lie underneath and see. See how she look. Okay then. So <clears throat> two mountain holes. Two mountain holes. <laughs> this is gonna be so far off. Oh, oh it's a bloody mile off. It's a mile off! Well, that does not work at all. It does not work in any way whatsoever. Damn. That's so disappointing. You know, if we pulled the sump, we'd be able to really figure out what if a two point, if a two point three car ever had like a like a double hump, a double hump sum, it would work. 
the 302 I had a front sump but you know what had a lot of sump variations is an LS a lot of sump variations I think we should pull the sump I don't feel like giving up yet <laughs> You know what I should do first? I should drain the oil. <laughs> this oil has done about 20 miles. It is thick and it is black. It is not clear. It was clear when it went in. So now that we have that little potential bump in the road out of the way, let's drop this off. what I'm doing which is surprisingly well prepared for me is at the four corners of the sump I'm leaving four bolts loosely in so that it doesn't just drop down on one end and cover me in oil ask me now how I know that happens no oh, mr. starters in the way bit of added security Definitely need to start labeling some stuff and some bags. Do you ever feel like you're completely falling down a rabbit hole? No. What I want you guys to start thinking now is if an engine swap was going to happen, what would you like to see in here? Okay then, so let's see if we're anywhere close. Car wise, not all for God's sake. Oil pickup is. The pickup is right there. The transmission lines are right there as well. So. <laughs> So we'll take the transmission lines out, that means I don't really want the automatic, so that means I'm going to find a different transmission and then that may not happen if I'm going to change the engine. <laughs> oh god. My safety situation. Extra safety. What to do? What is the plan of attack? Yeah. Okay, so transmission lines are out of the way. I've bent them over there. Let's take that oil pickup off and give another go. Somebody thought the oil pickup needed to be held on really tightly. Can't believe it. So it seems Ford, in their infinite wisdom, put one bolt <clears throat> in a position where when you back it out, it touches the block before it comes out. Thus, I can't get the oil pickup off without taking the oil pump off. Seriously, come on. I feel like that was Ford indulging in some serious dumbassery there. So I'd just like to say, my father-in-law, Bob Borowski, just saved me with this craft, no, it's not a craftsman, some super old, really well used 12 point, I don't know what even size it is, 5, 16, 8 mil. 8 mil 12 point that I did not have. I just uh, went through all the boxes that were in his garage. Oh, life saving. Oh, shit. I have no idea which way this went in. Answers, please. Did the. Uh... Okay. Are you ready? I think I've got about a minute left of battery on that phone, so. Let's do this quick. Ah, okay. You know what? I didn't tell me that worked. 
That's crazy. So we come. Oh, in case we go back. Oh, oil everywhere going all over me. Okay, so it's definitely going to take some pondering. Okay, this is definitely happy days. See, this is what's good about having a couple of projects on the go at once. They just you just get renewed enthusiasm, you know, and it's something new and just something different than you know I've been working on every day. I'll have to ponder now and think about it and do some research. So I don't know whether this is going to be in the next episode or the mutt's going to be in the next episode. We shall see. But we've made a really good start on this. This will work. We'll get it in somehow. Definitely some modifications need to be made. It's more difficult with the engine in, so maybe I have to rethink that choice. But it's better having it working for the channel, right, in bits, than sat on the side of the road doing nothing. Mm. Interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. I'm going to have to figure out where the front wheel center line is compared to the cross member itself. And that will tell... Really? Oh, in the head. That will tell me where... It's going to mount. I also need to uh, get the frame rails level, see if that's level, get the MUTS frame rails level, see if this area on her is level as well. I have a couple of friends in the 2.3 turbo world who know about swapping these 2.3 engines into Pintos and all sorts of stuff. Now I know a Pinto would run a front sump, I don't want a front sump, I kind of want a mid sump, I want a front and a rear bowl. I want, no, I don't want a mid sump. I want this to be in the middle and I want a front and a rear bowl. Now, if that's possible, that's the easiest option. And it's not possible. And I may not go that way anyway. <laughs> Engine swaps. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? How many cylinders? Between four and eight, I would say. Don't want to do rotary, so don't say rotary. Um... I have an idea of what I think would be really cool in this car. And it's not a V8. And it doesn't come with a turbo. Cryptic, methinks. Right, on that note, awesome day, lots of fun. This is just a complete lark. And I, I just, this is great. I just love this. All right. Thank you guys so much. See you Friday. 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Daylight savings, don't know what that does, but 7 a.m. in LA.